If you're often generating invoices in Excel, what you're about to learn is going to save you hours of time. We're going to build an automated invoicing system where all of the customer details get filled in using a dropdown, all of the totals and taxes get calculated automatically, and you can export the whole invoice as a PDF in just one click. Even better, it automatically gets saved with the invoice number and the customer name, and you can save it in the file path that you want. Best part is you automate this once and you can forget about how it's done entirely. So let's get into it. The first step for us is to create an invoice template, which is what we have over here under this invoice tab. And to the side, I have a second tab called customers, which is where we would list out all of our customers with their respective details. So in this invoice tab, you can see I already have some of the formatting done. So if you wanna follow along, you can download this exact same file, the video description for free. Right now, we've only worked on the formatting, so we need to make this dynamic. For example, under build two here, we want to have a dropdown that if we select a certain company, we're going to get their details. And if we change it, we're going to get different details. For this, we'll first make the dropdown list by going to data and clicking on this button over here for data validation. We're going to want a list and for the list source, it's going to be all our customers. That said, we want it to continue all the way to the bottom, right? So what we'll do instead is not just select these three, but with control shift down, select down all the way to the very bottom. That's fine by us. This way we'll make sure we don't miss anyone and click on okay. So we have this list right now, we have three people and right below it, we'd like to see their details. So their address and so forth. And we'll do this using an X lookup. Hit the tab key there. What are we looking for? Well, the company, right? In Mike Inc. in this case, we'll put the F4 key, to put the dollar signs. So when we drag this down, it's going to remain fixed, comma. The lookup array is basically where can we find Mike Inc.? Well, we can find it in column B, comma. And then the return array is what do we want as the answer? Well, we want their address number one. That's gonna be the first thing we want. We can then close that and hit enter. So you can see we have their address and now we just want to drag this down so it's going to be the address number two and the email but if we select on the second one right now you can see it's working well here but instead of customer c we just want to move that to a d that's the address two and then same thing with the bottom one we're just going to switch that to an e which is going to be their email now if we move this around from mike to abc company you can see we get their details same thing with sam over here and if I were to add someone else, let me just do this quickly. You can see here, I filled in some details about this test ink and we go over to the invoice. We can now see test ink in here and see their details down below as well. The bill to area is now dynamic. So let's work on the invoicing dates. So the invoice number is one we'll have to fill in manually, but for the date, well, we're invoicing today, right? So we'll just use the today function, close the parenthesis and hit enter. This is going to change as we open up this Excel file on a different day. And the due date, well, we just have to select the today and we can do something like plus 14 or plus 30 or whatever it is that you want to get paid by. Now let's work on the pricing and the taxes for it. So you can see right now that I have product A as a sample, have a quantity of one and the unit price. The taxes, let's suppose these are 20%. So it's going to be the unit price multiplied by the quantity multiplied by 0.2 and hit enter there so if the quantity changes to 2 then the tax should move as it is the case and then for the total excluding taxes it's going to be the price multiplied by the quantity and hit enter so if this goes to 1 the unit price should be the same as the total there that's all looking good and that means that we can now drag this area down just by clicking over here that said, we get all of these zeros, which don't really look that nice. So let's actually remove them by adding an if statement. So we'll say something like, if up here in the front, the quantity is equals to zero, then what do we want? Well, we want it empty. And we'll do that with two quotations there, no spaces between them, comma. And if it's false, meaning that there is a quantity, we can leave this as is. So we'll just go to the very end of the formula and just close that parenthesis and hit enter. Now I can drag this part down and you can see we no longer get those zeros. But as soon as I put a quantity in there, it starts to show up. That's fine because if there's a quantity, 
there needs to be a price for it as well, right? Then we'll do the same thing with the second part. So we'll put an if statement. If hit the top key, the quantity is equals to zero comma. Then we just want it empty. And if it's not equals to zero, we want this answer that we already have. Close a parenthesis, hit enter. And now we can just drag that down. Now that's looking good. I can change this to product B say. Let's put a quantity of three at a price of 10 bucks. And you can see how that automatically gets filled in. We want to do the same thing with the totals here. So the subtotal USD is going to be the sum of all of these in here and hit enter. Taxes is the sum of all of the taxes. So these right over here to the side. And then the total is going to be equals to the subtotal plus any taxes included. And you can see what that looks like there. If I zoom out here to see what we have below, we have some of the payment info and a comment. These are things that are usually not going to change for us at all. Right now we've added two products, but you can obviously customize this so you can remove this area if you wanted or add more even. Now we just need to make this printable. And for this, what we'll do is select the whole area we want printed. So it's from the top all the way to let's say around here. Let's give it a bit of margin on the bottom there. Now we just need to go over to page layout and click on print area, set print area. So this is our print area. We can test that by going to control P. That's basically the print format. You can see there what that looks like in the preview. So it's looking quite nice. We can escape out of that and here's what it looks like on Excel. Next up, we want to create a button over to the side that's going to say export as PDF. And so when we click it, it's going to export this whole file as a PDF in one click. But for this, we're going to need to save it as a macro enabled workbook. We can do that by going to file, save as. And then here as the save as type, we want to go for Excel macro enabled workbook and feel free to save it wherever you like. Once that's done, we want to head over to the developer tab. If you can't see it, just go to any other tab, right click and go to customize the ribbon. Once in here, on the right hand side, if you scroll down, you'll find the developer. Just go ahead and tick on that if it's unticked for you and click on OK. Now you should be able to see it to the side. To create this export as PDF button, we'll need to write some very simple code. And don't worry if you've never written code before, as you can just follow along. Go over to Visual Basic under the Developer tab. Just click on that. This is going to open up this window. I'm just going to split screen it so we can see both. So here we are. And again, you don't need to know anything about this. You just need to follow along as we go over to insert and click on module. Then we want to create what's known as a sub or sub procedure. And let's name this PDF. We'll open and close the parenthesis and hit enter. This sub, also known as a sub procedure, is basically like an action or a set of steps that we want to tell Excel to do. Within it, we need to declare our variables, which is essentially telling Excel what kind of data type we want, like an integer, a string of text, and so forth. So we'll put dim, first we'll have the invoice number, and that's going to be as long, that's going to be the data type there. Then we'll also do another dim for the name or the customer name. So this is going to be as a string, hit enter there. Then we'll want to specify both the file path as well as the file name. So let's put both dim the file underscore path as a string as well. And then dim the file name as a string. You don't have to name them the exact same thing as me. That's really just optional. Now that we've declared these variables, we want to tell Excel exactly where they're located. So first we have the invoice number. So we'll type invoice underscore number. And it's going to be equals to a range. And in parentheses and in quotations, where is the invoice number? Well, it's in G4. So we'll just put G4 in there, close the quotations and close the parentheses and hit enter. Same thing goes with the name. So it's basically the customer name, which is right in the center there. So we'll put name equals to range. And same thing here in quotations, it's going to be 5D. So D5 there, close the quotations there and close the parenthesis, hit enter. And next up we have the file path, which is going to be equals to in quotations there, 
wherever you want it located. So in my case, you can see here I'm in desktop under invoices and suppose I want to save it in here in my finder. I can just click on this top part and copy that. Once that's copied, I can just paste it inside of these quotations and make sure we put this dash in the end or forward dash like so. Finally, we're just missing the file name, which is going to be a combination of the invoice number and the company name. So let's go ahead and put file underscore name. It's going to be equals to the invoice underscore number. And let's put a space ampersand space and in quotations, we'll put an underscore. This is going to separate the invoice number from the name. So they're not glued together, basically. And we'll put the name in here. Just hit enter there. So we've now told Excel VBA where things are located. And the next step is to tell it what to actually do, which is to export as a PDF. So what we'll do is type active sheet dot export as fixed format type is going to be in semicolon equals to Excel type PDF comma. And we don't want the entire sheet, rather only the print area. So we'll go to ignore print areas with an S in the end. It's going to be semicolon equals to false comma again. And the file name is equals to the path. So the file underscore path. Then we'll put an ampersand and file underscore name. That should be all. If we scroll over to the side, it should say end sub at the end. Here I'm getting an error there and that's because I forgot to put the semicolon. So let me just put that in and now we're ready to go. We can run it by pressing on this button over here. I've just run that. It's called PDF. That's fine. We can now run it. If it's all worked correctly, when I head over to my finder under desktop invoices, you can see I have this PDF, which has the name of the invoice and the name of the company after it. It's saved in the right place. And you can see what that looks like. It's looking nice and clean. Next up, so we don't have to write this code again. We'll just close out of that and create a button instead inside of Excel that we can just press once to export. But first, if you want to learn to automate more of these tedious tasks in Excel, you can check out our VBA and macros for business automation course. If you're looking to automate data analysis tasks, financial reporting, and spreadsheet formatting, Learning VBA is going to be a game changer for your office productivity. In the course, you'll learn the fundamentals such as object properties, methods, and variables. Once you get a feel for the basics, we'll introduce more dynamic features such as conditional statements, looping functions, and data arrays. With this knowledge, you'll be able to perform a whole string of common spreadsheet tasks such as auto-generating pivot tables, formatting charts, building interactive input boxes, and more. Then you'll have two extensive case studies to apply the concepts you've learned. The first one will focus on automating a billing summary report for PwC's consulting team. And the second case study will focus on building an automated PL statement for Mercedes-Benz. So if you want to save hours of tedious office tasks, check out the link in the description below to get started with VBA and macros. So we've seen how this code is working correctly now. And instead of having to go inside of VBA every time, we just want to be able to access it here on Excel. We can do that by going over to the insert under the developer tab and clicking on this button. We'll just create it over here to the side. And we want to link this to our PDF macro that we just made. Click on OK. And we want to rename this so we can right click, edit text, and let's say export as PDF, because that's what we want it to do. And now we're ready to give this a try. Let's go ahead and change the name to, let's say, ABC Inc. And let's say we change the quantity to 5 and 10, just to see if all the changes happen. Same thing with the invoice. Let's say we go for 1050 and click on Export as PDF. We've just done that. Now, if we head over to Finder, you can see that we have the second invoice generated. It has the new invoice number with the new company name we can open it up and you can see it looks all fully updated with the same exact format. Now, whenever we receive a new invoice, the steps are very clear and they're going to take us very little time to complete. 
In just a few minutes, we've managed to make this huge time saver and the same thing is going to happen if you watch this video over here on merging multiple Excel files into one or by taking our macros and VBA course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.